Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. On today's episode, I'm going to be going over some of the basics of driving a manual transmission. Now this is going to be split into a multi-part episode, with the first part being a theoretical um, principles of operation video on manual transmissions, and the second part being an actual practical tutorial of how to drive one. So if you're interested just in viewing the tutorial part, feel free to skip ahead to the next video section. But I do recommend watching this part first because if you're learning to drive stick for the first time, it's helpful to understand how the transmission works before you actually get behind the wheel. That way you understand what's going on when you're actually uh, controlling the vehicle. So I'll start by introducing the basic principles of operation of the powertrain of your vehicle. Now the whole point of the vehicle's powertrain is to transfer mechanical power from the engine, which is the uh, source of mechanical power, to the wheels, which are in uh, many vehicles at the rear, They're, if it's a rear wheel drive vehicle. There are front wheel drive and four wheel drive vehicles, but today we will focus on getting the power from the engine to the wheels. Now the, uh, there's a few different components that uh, are connected in this train of connections. The first, of course, between the engine and the transmission is the clutch, so I'll just mark that clutch. And then we have the transmission itself, which is the uh, gear ratio shifting gearbox that you would refer to as the manual transmission in the vehicle. Now the transmission, which uh, will have the gear shift connected to it, is uh, it, tr it transfers its power into the drive shaft. The drive shaft is the rotating shaft underneath the vehicle that connects the front of the vehicle at the transmission to the differential of the vehicle. Now the differential of the vehicle is a, a 90 degree gearbox which allows the, uh, the direction of rotation to be changed by 90 degrees so the wheels can be operated and it also provides, a, uh, it pr allows one of the wheels to slip at a different speed from the other, for example if you were going around a turn. Now the, uh, the reason that we have this transmission, you might think it might be more simple to directly connect the drive shaft to the engine or the clutch, but the reason we have this transmission is due to the idea of gearing. So to be an effective driver and to prolong the life of your transmission, you want to be sure and put as little wear on the synchros as possible. Now to do this, you want to match the speeds of the gears so that uh, when you shift gears, the speed of the uh, counter shaft is approximately the same as the speed of the drive shaft multiplied by the gear ratio. Now the way that this is done normally is actually by uh, obviously applying the clutch. So this is what the purpose of the clutch plate and the clutch assembly is. It provides a linear actuation or a, uh, a linear transition between fully engaged and fully disengaged. Now what the clutch allows you to do is it allows your, your engine speed to be basically independent of your transmission speed. So when the clutch is applied, the engine does not transfer any power into the transmission. Now, this doesn't necessarily make for a smooth shift on its own, because even if the clutch is applied, the counter shaft may have enough momentum on its own to be spinning very, very fast. The purpose of the synchros is, of course, to match that speed, and they, do, they can do that regardless as long as the clutch is applied, but it is better for the, uh, for the transmission to uh, allow the synchros to do as little work as possible by pre-matching the speed of the gears. Now, really, the minutia of... Uh, advanced gear shifting techniques and maximizing transmission life is a little bit outside the scope of this video. So now that I've introduced the basics of how the gearbox works, I guess I'll focus a little bit more then on ap applying this knowledge to the actual driving conditions. Gears in a mechanical system use the inner meshing of uh, teeth which surround each gear to transfer mechanical power from one gear to another. Now in the case of these two gears here, this is a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning the speed of one gear will directly correspond to the speed of the other. This is because both gears have the same number of teeth and have the same diameter. This doesn't necessarily have to be the case, however. Gears can also be different gear ratios, and if you actually have a gear with a large diameter, coupling with a gear with a small diameter, then the rate at which the small gear will turn will be proportionately faster than the rate at which the large gear will turn by the number of teeth or the diameter of the two gears. Now the uh, torque is also affected, torque being the force applied to a given lever arm, uh, because if we assume the large gear and the small gear are meshed together, every time one of the teeth of the small gears uh, applies a 
force, this would be not torque, but force to the large gear, it operates on a much larger lever arm. And that means that the torque, which is normal to the direction of rotate or to the rotational axis of the actual uh, large gear, will actually be greater than the torque applied to the small gear because that lever arm is longer. Now what this allows you to do is it allows you to efficiently change the ratio of rotational speeds of a mechanical system. This is just like the mechanical gear system on a bicycle wherein the ratio of the chain uh, sprockets is different which allows the ratio of gearing to change on that system. Now in the system of, a, of an automobile the engine operates in the range of about 700 to 5000 rpm within its uh, rated within its rated operating speed now the wheels of your vehicle rotate considerably slower particularly when you're just starting off at a uh, at a stoplight you can't really run your uh, you can't really immediately spin the wheels from 0 to 5000 rpm just like that it would uh, it would result in just burning a bunch of rubber and probably just stalling out the engine so what you have to do is you have to use a gearbox, in this case the transmission, to change that gear ratio. So how exactly does an autom or a manual transmission work? How is it assembled? Well, on the very basic level, you have the input shaft, which comes from the clutch, the clutch being the device that allows you to engage and disengage the transmission, which is a system of friction plates that interfaces the flywheel of the engine with a rotating clutch plate which is then mounted on a spline going into the input shaft. That would be sort of like this would be your clutch plate and then here would be the flywheel of the engine and the flywheel would be connected to the uh, crankshaft of the engine. So this part here on this side is the engine, this side here is the transmission. Now when your input shaft goes into the transmission it first goes on to a fixed gear which is always engaged. This gear is meshed with usually an equivalently an equivalent diameter gear which is connected to what's called the counter shaft. Now the counter shaft is a part of the transmission which is always rotating as long as the input uh, shaft is rotating and mounted to this counter shaft are a system of gears. In this case I'm only going to show two for two different ratios. So here we have a small gear which is going to then drive a large gear this would be for a, a very low gear. That means at a high speed going in, a low speed will come out. And just for the sake of argument, I will show the opposite configuration, a much larger gear driving a smaller gear. Now these two gears, let's say that uh, these, are, let's, we'll say this is a very simple transmission. And uh, these gears are always rotating as long as the input shaft is rotating. And they are mounted uh, on bearings, which, the, which are surrounded which is surrounding the output shaft. Now this output shaft is what then connects to the drive shaft and that's what goes off to your differential. Now this output shaft is not directly coupled to these gears. The gears spin freely on the output shaft at all times but they do not rotate it. In between the two gears is a slide gear. Now this slide gear can move back and forth and it's controlled by what's called a shift fork. The shift fork is what goes to a linkage which then goes up to your shifter knob that's in the cab of the vehicle. So what this allows, this, uh, this slide gear, it can slide freely side to side but it's actually fixed rotationally to this output shaft. Now if uh, on each one of these uh, driven gears here there's another sprocket and this slide gear can engage with that sprocket which allows it to uh, to engage either one of these at a given time between the, uh, the counter shaft and the output shaft. This is how you actually shift gears. Now in, uh, to make it a little bit more uh, efficient and a little bit less damaging to the gears during the transitions, there are also a series of friction plates which are uh, sort of similar in operation to bicycle coaster brakes in that they're pressed against a flanged surface in order to create a friction fit and these are called synchronizers or synchros. Now the synchronizer's job is to make sure that the, uh, the counter shaft is rotating at the same relative speed as the necessary speed to achieve the, the gear meshing to the output shaft. So the synchronizers are nothing more than uh, momentary clutches that 
are friction interfaced by the application of force to the shift linkage that allow this, these two uh, shafts to join up and link. Now your synchronizers are sacrificial. Over the life of the transmission they are consumed just like the brake shoes in a coaster brake system or in any other braking system. So for this reason it's generally best as the driver to do your best to match the speeds of now in this picture I've only shown two gears. So this would be sort of like your first gear and this would be sort of like your second gear. Now on most, auto or most manual transmission gear shift knobs you have an H pattern which looks something like this. We'll show a five gear with reverse transmission where you have a one, two, three, four, five, and R transmission. Now the way that the linkage of the shift knob is actually connected to the transmission is such that in most cases, this is not for all transmissions, but for most transmissions, shifting the stick vertically, so like going from one to two, is what moves a specific slide gear from one gear to the next. Now since each slide gear can independently control only two gears, that's why we have this vertical limitation in two gears. However, we can have as many of these slide gears and uh, on the counter shaft as we want. In fact, we can have basically as many as the transmission, as many gears as the transmission has speeds. So different shift forks are engaged by moving the, sh the shift handle to the side. If you go to the 3-4 shift fork, you may be engaging a, uh, a slide gear over here. Now reverse is kind of a special case because it looks similar to this. However, to use this as an example, if this were the reverse gear here, it will have an additional gear in between. And the reason for having that additional gear, that they call that an idler gear, is because that creates the opposite rotation of the, uh, of the counter shaft rotation to create the reverse output to the drive shaft. As you can see here, changing the direction or rotating one gear creates an opposite direction of rotation in the other gear. Thus, introducing an idler gear in between two gears in the uh, gearbox allows the drive shaft to be driven in an opposite direction to what would normally be driven. That is, the drive shaft now spins in the same direction of the as the counter shaft, which is the opposite direction of the input shaft. Some vehicles, particularly off-road vehicles, will actually have an additional gearbox after the transmission. This is called a transfer case and it allows a, the front wheel drive system to be engaged or the rear wheel drive depending on the configuration in a four wheel drive vehicle. Now the transfer case itself may actually have its own system of gears wherein a lower gear can be selected but usually they use a very specific uh, proprietary gear system which may not be indicative or may not be reflective of the traditional uh, slide gear with synchronizer system. That's generally done for an improved robustness but it is good to be aware that some vehicles that uh, have four-wheel drive may have this additional gearbox in the drivetrain. So that covers the basic outline of the fundamentals of, and theory of operation of the manual transmission. This is of course not indicative of all manual transmissions, this is just the most common implementation. So now that you've seen the theory behind it, I highly recommend checking out my next video, which is the second part of this video, which introduces the techniques for actually driving one, and is a basic overview and tutorial of driving the transmission or driving a manual transmission car, as well as a, a basic overview of, uh, of some more advanced tips as well. So I'll see you in that next video.